I'm Mary Ann Scully, Chairman, President, and CEO of Howard Bank Corps and Howard Bank. When we decided in 2011 that in order to fulfill our growth strategy, we should begin complementing acquired growth with our then strong track record of organic growth. And we had also made a decision very early on, in some respects I would say, when the bank was founded, if you take a look at where our headquarters is, is geographically situated, that as we expanded, we would start at the southern end of Greater Baltimore, but gradually move into the heart of Greater Baltimore. In that time period from 04 until 11, when we made that decision to begin complementing the organic with acquired, uh, we saw a huge shift um, in the short term and, and the possibility of a greater shift in the configuration of the community banking industry. We saw size and scale becoming more important. We saw the uh, out-of-state banks continue to take a more and more dominant role. Um, new as longtime Baltimore bankers that there was always going to be a place for a local bank with our clientele and that there should be a greater role in the community again for a local bank and the people that can sit around a table together and make great things happen, whether it's a, a national aquarium or harbor place. So we were looking to Baltimore. We had identified Patapsco as somebody that uh, had a commercial base in Patapsco, so we were interested in, in that annuity stream. We thought there was a possibility that uh, they might, over the years, um, not have the same ability to remain independent because they might not be able to access capital. And so we actually started conversations with them in 2011. Uh, and uh, acquisitions are really relationships. Uh, they're not transactions. And that's probably a perfect example. And we continued to talk to them as they went through their own soul searching. Um, did go through a number of steps that allowed them to remain independent for a number of years, and then began talking to them again in late 2014. Um, went through a competitive bidding process and reached a negotiated agreement with them in March of this year. I think that the fact that our that our stock um, is a is a strong stock um, and is one that has proven that it can increase in value means that when you're using that as part of your currency, and it's always been a very important part of our currency, it's actually a fairly important part of our strategic discussions and our strategic positioning to say to somebody, yes. We understand a certain number of your shareholders will want cash, um, but cash has two negatives. One is that it's a fixed value, and the second is that it often comes with tax consequences. And so for those people that don't want literally a liquefying event, um, but rather just want to, to be better positioned from an investment standpoint, our currency thank God, has become an attractive currency. And we could point to, to Patapsco and to their advisors and say, look at what our share price has done. Look at what the potential is. And this is a way for you to uh, continue to grow your shareholders' wealth and not have your responsibility in that end the day the acquisition closes. Size and scale is, is right now in the industry, and I've seen these ebbs and flows over all my time in the business, but right now size and scale is important um, to some extent because of the regulatory environment and just the level of overhead you need to comply with that. But just as importantly, I think if you are a growth company, if you're positioned in a growth market, and we're both a growth company in a growth market, Greater Baltimore, you will have to have access to capital. And institutional investors certainly are more interested in banks now that are of a certain size. Um, asset size is, is usually correlated to capital. Capital is hopefully correlated to market capitalization. 
and those institutional investors want to know that your market capitalization's reached a certain level where you're participating in some indexes. You know, they will have liquidity if they, if they want it. Uh, so the, the billion dollars is very important as a, as a means to our end, which always has been and hopefully always will be to, to try to be more impactful for our shareholders by giving them more wealth, um, for our clients um, by having a larger capital base, which means a larger legal lending limit, which means an ability to help more clients on a repeated basis, uh, and the communities, because it means then we can, we can not only help one client at a time or help uh, one acquisition at a time maintain employment in the state, um, but we can help communities by uh, giving back to the community, whether that's volunteer leadership, and we do a lot of that, that's a key part of our culture, or whether it's direct contributions to different not-for-profits. So that impact theme is really important, and, and the billion dollars um, is, is not an artificial, but it is, it is a fairly significant means to an end. Um, but it's a milestone. I don't think it's where we stop, but it's a, it's a milestone. And in 2012, we, we laid it out as a, as a milestone, and we've come very close now with this, with this acquisition and reaching it.